the second lecture in module 5 on time integration techniques. In the first lecture, we discussed uh, the basics of time integration and we derived few two level time in integration schemes. And then we have to cover this multi level methods and predictor, corrector, and Runge Kutta methods in present lecture. And then we would proceed to applications to unsteady transport problems in the next lecture. Let us have a recap of what we did in the last lecture. We discussed the time integration for unsteady problem, accounting for the special nature of the time coordinate, which permits us to derive what we call marching time schemes, wherein we start from a given time instant and obtain the solution slightly ahead in future and then use that solution obtained at that instant as an initial condition to get ahead at the next time step. And we derived few two level time marching schemes for first order initial value problems. We will continue further and we derive two level and multi level methods for first order initial value problems. We will focus on the multi level methods based on what we call Lagrange interpolation polynomials and we will discuss few two level methods which of Runge Kutta family. So, this outline of the lecture. We will derive multi level methods of Adams family. Then we will have a look at what we call predictor character methods and one special method of this family called Runge Kutta methods. We will also have a look at the methods which can be derived directly by finite difference approximation of the time derivative. Just a recap of our initial value problem, we have stated it as d phi t by d t is equal to f t comma phi. So, this right hand side function f could be a function of time as well as a function of our unknown variable phi. Initial condition at time t is equal to 0 is prescribed, phi t 0 is equal to phi 0. And we said we can obtain a time marching algorithm based on the integration of the IVP from t n to t n plus 1. That is to say, if you know the solution at time level t n, we should be able to obtain the solution at time level t n plus 1 by simply integrating our IVP t n to t n plus 1 d phi by d t d t, which gives us phi n plus 1 minus phi n is equal to t n to t n plus 1 in t, this definite integral of the right hand side f t comma phi t d t. And we said all that we need to now find out is if we can get the value of this integral on the right hand side, we have obtained a time marching algorithm. And we did obtain few time marching algorithms which involved the values of uh, the variable phi at time instance t n and t n plus 1. Now, in multi level methods, what do we do? They are also called multi point methods or multi step methods. Though sometimes the difference is made between multi point and multi level methods. For instance, some people prefer to call a Runge Kutta methods, which are essentially two time uh, two level or one step methods, but they involve the values at many points in that time interval. That is why this is multi point in the same time interval. But we will use these as synonyms multi point, multi level, or multi step methods. They involve function values at more than two time instants. And the most popular multi point methods are what we call Adams methods, which are derived by fitting a polynomial to the derivative, that is our f phi t at a number of points in time. And what choice of polynomial would usually be Lagrange interpolation polynomial. And we can have two families of uh, this Adams method. The first one is what we call Adams bash fourth method. And these are explicit methods of order m plus 1, which are obtained by fitting a Lagrange polynomial to this function f phi of t at points t n minus m comma t n minus m plus 1 so on up to t n. So, fit the values at these m points and thereby obtain a polynomial approximation of f in terms of the function values at uh, these time instants. And once these are known, now all of these time instants are what we call previous time instants. So, a solution phi would be known at t n minus m, t n minus m plus 1 and t n and so on. So, the integral which you would obtain that would contain all known terms. So, that is why 
these methods are called explicit methods. So, for instance, this is our first order adams basforth method, this is explicit Euler method which we can easily show. The second order method uh, for m is equal to 1, this is given by phi n plus 1 is phi n plus delta t by 2 3 f t n comma phi n minus function value at n minus 1 and phi n minus 1. Now, let us see how do we obtain this method starting from our basic premise of fitting a Lagrange interpolation polynomial. So, we want to derive this Adams best fourth method of order 2. So, here our m is equal to 1. So, basically this would involve the interpolation of the function in terms of the function values at time instants t n and t of n minus 1 and we want to obtain our solution at the time instant t n plus 1. So, now let us write polynomial approximation for f phi t. So, this can be expressed in terms of uh, two Lagrange interpolation polynomials. So, first one which is based on the use of the function value at say phi n t n. t minus divided by t n minus 1 minus t n. So, this is f at time instant n minus 1 then we will have this t n phi n t minus t of n minus 1 divided by t n minus t of n minus 1. So, basically we have used what we call linear Lagrange interpolation polynomial to approximate our function f phi t or f t phi. Now, what we want to find out is we want to find out this integral t n 2 t n plus 1 f of t comma phi d t. So, now let us put this previous approximation. So, it would be f of t n minus 1 comma phi n minus 1. So, this is a value which does not depend on t. So, we can take it out of the integral sign. Similarly, this t n minus 1 minus t n that can also be taken out of the integral sign t of n minus 1 minus t n and what we need to integrate is t minus t n. So, t n to t n plus 1 d t. So, the first term and the contribution from second term f t n phi n 1 divided by t n minus t of n minus 1 integral from t n to t n plus 1 of t minus t of n minus 1 d t. Now, let us have a look at these integrals. How do we obtain these integrals? To obtain the definite integrals, substitute t minus t n, let us call it a, an intermediate variable v. So, then our integral t n 2 t n plus 1 t minus t n d t 
this would become integral 0 to delta t v dt which is v square by 2 0 to delta t that is delta t square by 2. How about the next integral? Our limits say t n to t n plus 1. Now, we have got this term t minus t of n minus 1 d t. So, we can express it as t n to t n plus 1 t minus t n plus t n minus t n minus 1 d t. Now, we are ready to, to perform the substitutions t minus t n that is equal to v and t n minus t n minus 1 that is our delta t. So, this is 0 to delta t v plus delta t dv, which is v square by 2 0 to delta t plus delta t times v 0 to delta t. So, that the first term will give us delta t square by 2 and second term would simply give us delta t square. So, we get 3 by 2 delta t square. And uh, now, the denominators this t n minus 1 minus t n that is simply minus delta t and the denominator in the next expression is simply delta t. So, now let us substitute these back. So, this our integral t n to t n plus 1 f of t phi d t this would be minus delta t square divided by delta t that is what we get t n minus 1 minus t n that is minus 1 by delta t and the integral was delta t square by 2. So, we get minus delta t square by 2 delta t f at t n minus 1 phi n minus 1 plus next term that 1 by t n minus t n minus 1 that is delta t. So, we get 3 delta t square by 2 delta t times f of t n phi n. So, this gets further simplified and this we can write it as delta t by 2 3 f t n phi n minus f t n minus 1 phi n minus 1. So, we can substitute back and uh, obtain the final time marching scheme. So, we had this d phi by d t d t integrated from t n to t n plus 1. This was equal to phi of n plus 1 minus phi n and this was equal to our integral which we have just obtained delta t by 2 3 f t n phi n minus f of t n minus 1 phi n minus 1. Rearrange the terms and we get our time integration scheme phi of n plus 1 is equal to phi n plus delta t by 2 3 f t n phi n minus f of t n plus 1 sorry t n minus 1 phi of n minus 1. So, this is our second order Adams Bassforth 
method and as you can easily say the on the right hand side we get only the function values phi n and phi n minus 1 which are known values. So, right hand side can be evaluated explicitly. So, that is why it is a it is an explicit method of order 2. Similarly, you can take m is equal to 2 that is to say you can fit a Lagrange interpolation polynomial using the function values at uh, t n, t n minus 1 and t n minus 2 and you can derive a third order Adams best fourth method. So, this I would leave as an exercise. derive third order that is we will take m is equal to to third order Adams best fourth method. We will follow the same procedure that you use. Uh, in fact, when we take m is equal to 2, we will have quadratic Lagrange interpolation polynomials by making the appropriate substitutions t minus t n is equal to v that is the only substitution which we need to make and uh, thereby you can easily obtain this third order method given by phi n plus 1 is equal to phi n plus delta t by 2 23 f t n comma phi n minus 16 f at t n minus 1 phi n minus 1 plus 5 of f t n minus 2 and phi n minus 2. To check the accuracy of your result, this one simple way, whether we have derived our things correctly or not, look at the coefficients. Here is, for instance, the first second order method. The coefficient of f at t n that is 3, and the next term the coefficient is minus 1. So, 3 minus 1 that gives us 2. 2 divided by 2 that should equate to 1. Similarly, here we have got 23 minus 16 that gives us 7, 7 plus 5, 12, 12 by 12 is equal to 1. So, that is how the things should be that the coefficients of all these function multipliers divided and whatever it, we have got in denominator of delta t when they are these two numbers are divided we should get 1 and that uh, to confirm the correctness of our derivations. Okay, so, this these were our explicit methods of Adams Bassforth family. I would just make one remark that we can obtain third order, fourth order fifth order we can find out or we can keep on increasing the accuracy order of accuracy of this method. But all of these methods are what we call linear methods because they have got on the right hand side the function values uh, there is a linear combination of the function values at different time steps. And there is one important result in maths literature which says that we cannot have what we call a stable methods of order more than 2. So, that is one small limitation which we need to keep in mind when we go for higher order methods. Next we move on to Adams Moulton method, these are implicit method. So, these are implicit methods of order m plus 1 which are obtained by fitting a Lagrange polynomial to function values f phi t using values at points t n minus 1 plus m plus 1 so on so forth and we would include the value of a it unknown function at t n plus 1 as well. So, this is why since in our interpolation for f we would use the function value, the value of the function phi or unknown phi at t n plus 1, the result would be an implicit method. So, what is the first order Adams Moulton method? That is our implicit Euler method. The second one is the crank nicholson method. So, I have not written the formula for these two because we have already seen these both of these earlier. The third order method is given by phi n plus 1 is equal to phi n plus delta t by 12 5 f n plus 1 plus 8 f n minus f of n minus 1. Now, let us try and see if we can derive this third order method. So, let us get back to a board and try and derive this uh, third order Adams Moulton method. So, 
So now we want to use the function values at three points. Values to be used in interpolation at time instants T of n minus 1, T n and T n plus 1. So, the presence of this future time instant that what leads to what we call an implicit method. So, T n minus 1, so our present T n and the future T n plus 1 and please remember we are dealing with what we call uniform time step that is difference between uh, these time labels is the same. Now, can we write the Lagrange interpolation approximation? So, polynomial approximation for f T phi using Lagrange interpolation. Now, since there are three points involved, we will have a or we would use what we call quadratic Lagrange interpolation polynomials f of t phi, this would be approximated by f n minus 1. And the interpolation function for this would involve this denominator, denominator would be this t of n minus 1 minus the next one that is t n and the second term would be t of n minus 1 minus t of n plus 1. And what we will have in numerator? In numerator, we have t minus t n to t minus t of n plus 1. So, that is our first term. The second term which multiplies f n. Now, in denominator, we will have t n minus t of n minus 1 into t n minus t of n plus 1 and in numerator we have t minus t of n minus 1, t minus t of n plus 1. Similarly, the interpolation function we can write for the function value at time n plus 1. For the sake of uh, simplicity, we have used here now or shorthand notation that f n minus 1 actually represents the function value at t n phi n and so on. So, this would be the denominator here would be t n plus 1 minus t n and t n plus 1 minus t f n minus 1. In numerator, we have t minus t n and t minus t of n minus 1. So, now you have to evaluate the integral and of f t phi and for that let us all that we need to find out is first find out then inter, uh, say integral different integrals of the three interpolation functions which we have used over the same time interval. So, let us find it out one by one and we would again use the same process that we would substitute substitute t minus t n is equal to v in evaluation of integrals. Now, the choice of this change of variables that will lead us our interval would become this gives us 
or integration interval interval that is tn to tn plus 1 that gets transformed to 0 to delta t. Okay, so, let us evaluate each integral 1 by 1. Let us call the first term i 1. So, i 1 is equal to integral of t n to t n plus 1 t minus t n into t minus t of n plus 1 divided by t of n minus 1 minus t n into t of n minus 1 minus t of n plus 1 d t. So, as far as denominator goes that is constant. So, let us see what the terms in denominator are. So, t of n minus 1 minus t n is simply minus delta t and t of n minus 1 minus t of n plus 1 that would become twice of so minus 2 delta t. Now, in numerator we had t minus t n would be our uh, variable v, but how about t minus t of n plus 1, this we can write as t minus t n plus t n minus t of n plus 1. So, in terms of a substituted variable it would become v minus delta t. So, now in the changed variables integral i 1 becomes i 1 is 0 to delta t. In numerator we will have v into v minus delta t and denominator we get minus delta t minus 2 delta t d t which is equal to 1 over 2 delta t square v cube by 3 minus v square by 2 times delta t 0 to delta t. So, it would become 1 over 2 delta t squared delta t cube by 3 minus delta t cube by 2 or that is equal to minus delta t by 12. Our next integral which uh, multiplies f n i 2 is equal to t n to t n plus 1 t minus t of n plus 1 into t minus t of n minus 1 divided by t n minus t of n plus 1 and t n minus t of n minus 1 d t. So, once again let us have a look at the terms in denominator. So, denominator terms are this t n minus t of n plus 1 this would become minus delta t and uh, t n minus t of n minus 1, this is simply delta t. In numerator, the terms would become, <coughs> let us see each term in numerator, t minus t of n plus 1 that we have already seen earlier, this translates to v minus delta t in our changed variable and t minus t of 
n minus 1 this would become v plus delta t. So, this in the changed variables the integral i 2 would become 0 to delta t v square minus delta t square divided by minus delta t square d t which is equal to minus 1 over delta t square v cube by 3 minus delta t square v 0 to delta t. minus 1 over delta t square within brackets delta t cube by 3 minus delta t cube which is plus 2 by 3 delta t. The last term the integral of the last term which is coefficient of f n plus 1 let us continue this over Adams Moulton method. So, let us call that integral as I 3, this is integral of T n to T n plus 1, T minus T n, T minus T of n minus 1 divided by t of n plus 1 minus t n into t of n plus 1 minus t of n minus 1 d t. So, denominator of the first term is simply delta t so that is t n plus 1 minus t n. So, a delta t and t of n plus 1 minus t of n minus 1 that would become 2 delta t. and our t minus t of n minus 1 this would become v plus delta t. So, in changed variables i 3 would become 0 to delta t v into v plus delta t d v divided by delta t into 2 delta t. So, equal to 1 by 2 delta t square v cube by 3 plus v square by 2 delta t 0 to delta t 1 over 2 delta t square 3 and 6 5 delta t cube divided by 6 which is 5 by 12 delta t. So, now if you substitute all these values then we get integral thus t n to t n plus 1 of a function t phi t d t this would become <coughs> minus delta t by 12 f of t n minus 1 phi n minus 1 plus 2 by 3 delta t f of t n phi n plus 5 by 12 delta t f of t n plus 1 phi n plus 1. So, substituted our original equation 
into this phi n plus 1 minus phi n is equal to integral t n to t n plus 1 f t phi t d t we will get phi n plus 1 is equal to phi n let us take delta t by 12 common. So, delta t by 12, then we will get in within brackets minus f of t n minus 1 phi f n minus 1 plus 8 times f of t n phi n plus 5 times f of t n plus 1 phi n plus 1. So, this is our formula for Adams Moulton method. Okay. So, this is our third order method phi n plus 1 is equal to phi n delta t by 12 phi f of f t n plus 1 phi n plus 1 plus 8 f of t n phi n minus f of t n minus 1 phi n minus 1. Same procedure you can adopt if you want to obtain Adams Moulton method of higher orders, the integration process and the substitution which we have made exact, exactly the same what we had just discussed. Now, what are the advantages of these Adams method both implicit and explicit type? They are easy to construct and program Adams method of any order. We can follow exactly the same procedure of integration and uh, at each evaluation we need only one evaluation of function f phi t. The ones which are uh, coming from the previous step they can be evaluated and saved in a temporary variable. Disadvantage of these methods they require initial data at many points. If you have got higher order Adams method they will require data not just at t n they would also require data at t n minus 1, t n minus 2 and so on. Hence these methods are not self starting in the sense that at t is equal to t 0 we have got only one set of initial data. So, in such situations what we have to do is at first time step we have to use a lower order Adams method for instance at t is equal to t 0 we use first order method or Arunga Kutta method and then change over in the succeeding time steps to a higher order Adams method. Next the family of methods we will discuss is what we call predictor character methods and the rationale is very simple. We looked at two family of Adams method explicit method and implicit ones. Explicit Adams method they are easy to program and use, but there is a stability problem they are conditionally stable. Implicit method specifically the backward ILA method it is unconditionally stable for any value of delta t. So, these implicit method they offer better stability, but they are computationally expensive because we have to solve a system of equation at each time step. It is something which we can get as a compromise, something which is as easy to evaluate as explicit Adams method and has slightly better stability properties. So, this is what we get from predictor character methods. These predictor character methods offer a compromise between these two choices, they are less evaluations and slightly better efficiency stability than explicit Adams methods. And there is a wide variety which you can find in the mathematics on numerical methods for initial value problems. Now, this choice would uh, variety would depend on choice of what we call base methods and time instants used in predictor and character steps. Now, if you use uh, Adams Bassforth method as predictor and Adams Moulton scheme as character method, so they are referred to as multi level predictor character methods or Adams Bassforth Moulton schemes. And their possibility is what we call uh, popularly known as Runga Kutta methods, which are essentially two level multi point methods. Let us have a brief look at few methods of both types. So, first one multi level predictor character methods that is our Adams Bassforth Moulton scheme. So, it is a multi level predictor character method because it requires the initial conditions at quite a few time steps. 
So, here we would use an Adams Bassworth method, which is an explicit method as predictor, and an Adams Moulton method as corrector. So, this one scheme which is called fourth order Adams Bassworth Moulton scheme. So, predictor you would predict the value at time n plus 1 using an explicit Adams Bassworth scheme. Let us call it phi star n plus 1. So, this is equal to phi n plus delta t by 24. 55 value of f at t n phi n minus 59 value of function f at t n minus 1 phi n minus 1 plus 37 f t n minus 2 phi n minus 2 minus 9 f t n minus 3 phi n minus 3. Now, let us define a variable f star n plus 1 which is the value of function evaluated at t n plus 1 using the predicted value of phi at t n plus 1 which we had called phi star n plus 1. And now, we can use an Adams Moulton scheme as character. So, phi n plus 1 using that scheme becomes phi n. In place of the unknown value at uh, t n plus 1, we are going to use f star n plus 1. So, phi n plus 1 becomes phi n plus delta t by 24, 9 f star n plus 1. This is based on the predicted values plus 19 f t n phi n minus f of t n minus 1 phi n minus 1 plus f t n minus 2 phi n minus 2. So, these predicted character methods they can give us high accuracy, but their stability is much poorer compared to the implicit Adams Moulton scheme. The advantage would be in this case we would require two function evaluations at each time step. Disadvantage again these Adams family they are not self starting because at the first time step we require either a lower order method or use of a Runge Kutta method. Next, our Runge Kutta methods. We will have a look at two of these such Runge Kutta methods. So, these are two level methods, multi point methods. We are going to evaluate the value at time level t n plus 1 using the values of t n few time instant in between these two. So, these are easy to use and self starting, but they require more computational effort per time step as required compared to multi level Adams methods, which require only one function evaluation per time step. The advantage with these Runge Kutta methods are they are more accurate and stable than multi level Adams method of the same order. So, that is why they are also very popularly used in CFD. Now, let us have a look at two of these second order Runge Kutta method. The second order method consists of a two steps, a half step predictor based on explicit Euler method followed by a midpoint rule as character. What do you mean by half a step? We are looking at the value, predicted value at t n plus half. So, our time step becomes delta t by 2. So, that is why we call it half a step. So, predictor step is let us compute an estimated value of the function phi at time step, at time instant n plus half. So, phi star n plus half is equal to phi n plus delta t by 2 f t n phi n. Everything is known at time instant n. So, we can easily compute phi star n plus half. Then compute a correct uh, value of function at n plus 1 using midpoint rule. Now, now, midpoint rule requires the function value at time instant t n plus half. This is what we have computed at uh, using predictor step phi star n plus half. So, this is what we are going to use in our midpoint rule phi n plus 1 is phi n plus delta t the value of function f at t n plus half comma phi star n plus half. So, this is what we have used here in the midpoint rule in place of phi n plus half which is unknown we had used the predicted value. So, now as a result we get a scheme which is second order accurate in time that is what is the accuracy of the midpoint rule and it is explicit one. So, this is what we call explicit second order Runge Kutta method. The next one is what we call fourth order Runge Kutta method. Please note that there is a family of Runge Kutta methods available in literature, both of explicit type and implicit type. So, if you are interested in details, you can pick up any book on numerical solution of initial value problems and you can see variable order Runge Kutta methods in detail. Here we will have a look at one more that is fourth order Runge Kutta method. So, it consists of four steps, a half step explicit Euler predictor followed by 
an implicit Euler corrector at t n plus half, then a midpoint rule predictor for full time step and the last one is Simpson's rule corrector for full step. So, let us look at each of these steps one by one. Half step explicit Euler predictor that is to say we want to compute the function value at n plus half or t n plus half, let us call it phi star n plus half. So, this is equal to phi n plus delta t by 2 f t n phi n. So, this is the value predicted by explicit Euler method. Now, let us correct it using implicit Euler at time instant t n plus half. So, let us call it corrected value is phi star star. So, phi star star n plus half this is equal to phi n plus delta t by 2 function f evaluated at t n plus half comma phi n plus half. So, in place of unknown phi n plus half we use the value predicted in first step. So, we have put phi star n plus half. So, even phi star star n plus half can be computed explicitly because on the right hand side everything is known, phi n is known, t n plus half is known and phi is at n plus half that has been replaced by the predicted value in the first step of the Runge Kutta method. Third step, let us use midpoint rule predictor because we have already got a fairly good estimate of the function value of phi at t n plus half. So, that can be used in our midpoint formula. So, phi star n plus 1 is equal to phi n plus delta t f of t n plus half comma phi star star n plus half and we will still call this as not as final value, but this phi star n plus 1 is a predicted value. And now, we would use Simpson's rule corrector for the full step and this uh, final step would involve all the predicted value which we have computed so far. So, that is in the first two steps, we computed uh, phi star n plus half, we got this function evaluation done f t n phi n, the next week did the function evaluation f t n plus half phi star n plus half. So, all these evaluations we are going to make use of in our Simpson's rule character. So, phi n plus 1 becomes phi n plus delta t by 6 f t n phi n plus twice of f t n plus half comma phi star n plus half plus twice of f t n plus half comma phi star star n plus half plus f of t n plus 1 comma phi star n plus 1. So, in this case we would need total of 4 function evaluations f at t n phi n, f at t n plus half, f uh, phi star n plus half, the third one is f t n plus half comma phi star star n plus half and f of t n plus 1 comma phi star n plus 1. So, compared to an Adams Basforth or Adams Moulton scheme, we require three additional function evaluations per time step, but these uh, Runge Kutta methods are a lot more accurate and they are a lot more stable compared to Adams family methods. The last scheme in this time integration scheme, we will have a look at what we call finite difference based schemes. We have already seen few such methods when we were discussing the implicit Euler and, and explicit Euler methods. So, we can use finite difference approximation of the time derivative to construct a time marching scheme similar to two level and multi level methods. For instance, this forward difference approximation which gave us explicit Euler method, this we have already seen earlier. That is to say, we replaced our time derivative del phi by del t by phi n plus 1 minus phi n divided by delta t is equal to f t n phi n and it gave us this explicit error method phi n plus 1 is equal to phi n plus delta t times f of t n phi n. Similarly, if you use a three point backward difference approximation for time derivative that is d phi by d t at t n plus 1, this can be approximated as 3 phi n plus 1 minus 4 phi n plus phi n minus 1 divided by delta 2 delta t. So, this leads to second order accurate implicit scheme which would be given by phi n plus 1 is equal to 4 by 3 phi n minus 1 by 3 phi n minus 1 plus 2 by 3 phi n plus f of t n plus 1 comma phi n plus 1 into delta t. 
So, this way we would stop as far as our discussions on different time integration schemes are concerned. And if you want to have full de further details, you can refer to the book by Chung or Fersiger and Perik or this book by Wood Practical Time Stepping Scheme by Clarendon Press Oxford. So, all these three books they come contain a lot more time integration schemes for initial value problems.